Thank you. Today, I want to talk to you about the importance of photography for luxury hotels and destinations. And I have chosen Andalusia as my destination. Andalusia has been my home for the last 22 years. And during that time, I have photographed as a travel photographer images for magazines, for guidebooks, newspapers and websites worldwide. I photographed every single province in Spain, all 50 provinces. I believe that each and every one of you in this room has some kind of responsibility to promote this region. And quite often it can be a byproduct of what you actually do. After my time as a travel photographer, I went on to photograph other different countries outside of Spain. And also, I now have the niche speciality of photographing luxury hotels around the world. So I want to talk to you about my passions. My first passion is photographing Andalusia. And my second passion is photographing luxury hotels around the world. Like the very, <coughs> the very modest image that just flashed up on the screen there. And I also want to talk to you about a problem in the industry. And the problem is that quite often you can stay at a luxury hotel, and this has happened to me on many occasions, and you don't actually feel the same quality as the, as the images, and within this talk, I'm also going to provide you with a solution. And like any problem, we need to understand the symptom of, symptoms of that problem to be able to recognize the problem. The symptoms can be wide and far reaching. It can be things like the beds are badly made. Who wants to look at a hotel and imagine that somebody else has slept in that bed before you? There can be no focal point. Or perhaps the pictures have been taken on a day when the climate just isn't good. So let me show you some examples. Here's a picture of the Alhambra. And as you can see, the Alhambra is almost dissolving into the trees. There's no strong message. Here's a swimming pool. The intention here has been very good. All of the hammocks have been put out neatly in a row. So have the towels. However, there's no substitute for good sunlight. So this photograph just doesn't work. Another example. Hands up anybody in this room who's chosen a hotel because they had a good toilet. I see no hands. <laughs> so do you really think we need to show the toilet? Do we need to show that rolled up bath mat with all the germs inside? Do we really need to have a Hitchcock moment with the, the shower curtain? <laughs> we could eliminate those wires. We could also, when you're lighting two rooms, the rooms must be equally lit. So basically one, if it's, if, if the, the lighting isn't equal. One will appear dark and one will appear very light. Eliminate wires and never use the worst lighting of all photography, which is fluorescent lighting. I want to talk to you about photographing bedrooms. This image has beds that are badly made. It's unforgivable. <laughs> and you can also see right behind the flat screen TV. Who wants to see that? There's no styling on the bedside table. And if you look at the window, the window looks as if we're in a sandstorm. So we don't even know where we are in the world. So we can send in a crew and we can remake that bedroom and look at the difference that it makes. But we've still got one problem. And this problem is related to something called HDR, high dynamic range, which I'm going to talk to you about a little bit later. Add the view and that bedroom transforms itself. <laughs> Everybody would probably want to stay there. It's now a room in Switzerland. It isn't a room in a sandstorm. I also want to talk to you about vision because vision, we have five senses and vision is our very, very most important sense. And it's within vision that we interpret photographs and it's within vision that we remember information and that information stays with us. Professor John Medina is a neurosurgeon he spent his lifetime's work studying why we are so incredible at remembering photographs and pictures. And why is that? John Medina gives us three reasons. 
Because primitive man recognized danger through vision and photography. He recognized opportunities to have food through vision. And he also re recognized opportunities for reproduction. He also tells us that if I give you a piece of information, just a verbal piece of information, if I tell you Rhonda has an incredible sunrise, in three days' time, 90% of that's forgotten. You've only re retained 10%. But if I give you a picture, we're incredible at remembering pictures, and here's a picture that I've taken of the sunrise in Rhonda, and you're going to remember 65% of that. Very important if you're choosing a hotel and destination or you're choosing where to stay because this can bring more clients. So I talked through the problems, and hopefully you can recognize some of them now. The solution is really simple. The solution is far from ordinary photography. And I'm going to take you through seven powerful steps, from the light, which can make or break an image, through to the essence, which was my personal favorite, heritage, geo-identifiers, seasons, view, and lifestyle. Light. The word photography means drawing with light. It comes from the Greek, photon and graphy. Light and drawing. And it's the light that creates the fairy tale. It's the light that makes and breaks the image. So take a look at this image. This is a white village in, in Cordoba. And the light is what you will remember. You will see the light transforming from the almond blossom right the way through up to that Moorish castle. We travel around the world and we remember the light. It's one of the things that we always sticks in our mind. So here we have a girl from Andalusia looking right over to another continent, to Africa. This was a photograph that I shot in a hotel in Madrid. You have to recognize the light and you need to be able to go back and capture that. The next point is the essence. For me, the most important point. You can take a picture of a five-star hotel bedroom, but go close in and you now can feel the fabrics. You can anticipate what type of hotel this is. These images work very, very well on the web. Here we have a picture of a bathroom. But if I take you in closely, you now have a more romantic image. You can now see the candles, the chocolates, and the whole story that's going on. And you can also do this with architecture. So here we have a picture now of the Plaza de España in Sevilla, somewhere we've all probably been to. But if I take you in close, now you can receive the sights, the sights and sounds of Seville. Very simple image. One waiter, one silver tray, one white, white glove, and one gin and tonic. Now, anybody in this room who's thinking, mm, just fancy a gin and tonic, <laughs> that sensation has gone from your brain through this photograph. It's all connected. Keep the images strong and simple. For me, Andalusia is more sexy close up. So these pictures of six olives work far better than showing the whole tree. And remember, people are looking at destinations through foreign eyes. So here, this screams Seville, especially to a foreigner. We don't even need to see the flamenco dancer here. We can almost imagine and anticipate the grace of her dance. Time, time is luxury. We are all short of time. When was the last time that you were able to sit down on a sofa and read a physical magazine or a newspaper with a cappuccino and not be interrupted. That's luxury. And that also should be shown to the world. A cake, a simple cake, but this is no ordinary cake. This is the, hotel, this is the cake that has been made in the Hotel Sasha, the Sasha Tort, for over 100 years. And people will come to that hotel just to eat that cake. So the cake needs to be photographed. That completes the session, the session on essence. We've been through light, essence, and I now want to take you on to heritage. Andres Augustine, the president of the most famous hotels of the world, tells us 
that luxury can be bought, but history, history can't be bought. History must be earned. So if you have history within your hotel photography, people will latch onto that and they will buy into the story. And Lucia has an incredible history, overwhelming history, from the Moorish Mosque in Cordoba, right the way through to the Renaissance churches, churches of Jaén. The next point is geographical indi indicators. Geographical indicators is exactly what it says, telling you where you are in the world. So here we have a very simple image. Flowers, grey slate tiles. The image was shot in Frankfurt. It takes us straight to Northern Europe. Here we have the incredible smiles of India. And then I can take you on a voyage. I can take you right across to the Far East. And with imagery, I can bring you right back to Spain with a very graphical image with the blue sky. And how about going to the Barrier Reef, the heart of the Barrier Reef? Or how about going to the heart of Andalusia? Where else would you see an old guy selling vegetables on the doorstep and a girl in a bikini talking to him? <laughs> Next point is the seasons. Some countries have very distinct seasons, just such as this hotel in Switzerland. So we have incredible amounts of snow. But let me show you it in summertime. I'll just take you back again. There's the winter season, and there's the summer. So basically, that particular resort needs very good, very strong imagery representing those two seasons. In the Far East, this literally can be one day or one week, and this can be the scene the next week. So photography must be planned. Andalusia, as a destination, needs to be photographed every single month of the year. Some, photogra some people may get frustrated and think, oh, I've missed the summer season. But don't worry. If you arrive there in November, November has its very own visual po poetry too. The view, and I want to talk about the view. Something that I touched on earlier. This picture was taken in San Francisco. <coughs> at this time of day, at twilight, the light is more or less the same on the inside and the outside of the room. So it works well. But usually, it's very bright on the outside of the room. And this is where I want to bring you on to high dynamic range. Our eyes, the human eye, my eyes, your eyes, are incredible at registering light. We can see starlight, moonlight, right the way through to direct sunlight. And this is a difference in statistics of one to one billion, or 24 stops if you actually know anything about photography. We have yet to build a camera that can do this. So basically what we have to do is to join multiple exposures together to represent the highest, the lightest part of the photograph and the darkest part of the photograph. <coughs> so let me show you an example. This is a hotel that I shot in Singapore. The room has been prepared. We have this problem that there's an intense sunlight outside. And then we add the view. And just look at the image. It's now three-dimensional. Not only is it three-dimensional, the view from the window is to the Singapore flyers, so you also know this hotel is incredibly well situated. This is a hotel that I shot two weeks ago with my crew in London. How else would you be able to provide an image in January that looks like it's absolutely sun-drenched with daffodils and sun coming right the way through? This is high dynamic range. When I choose a hotel, like many of you, I don't select the hotel by the words. We're actually now leaving those words to Google. I'm selecting by the images. And the same is applying to destinations. So we need strong images for our destinations. The last point, the seventh point, is styling and lifestyle. This is adding the pretty things, the makeup, the hair, the props, the models. 
When I was presented with this dish, Coconut Island, in a hotel, I knew I had to go back and shoot it the next day because I knew that it sent a very strong visual me message. And food is huge. Food will bring in many different clients to destinations and hotels. Here's a local luxury hotel. They're providing afternoon tea. And they're photographing it, fantastic. But they're also really clever. And they're also providing a Spanish version of that same afternoon tea with a more contemporary flair. Models. Models are expensive, but they're really worth it, especially for sporting activities. This photograph here, I can count maybe 10 different geographical identifiers within the, within the scene. <coughs> and this one, a rural scene within Andalusia. You know, you take a rural scene and you add technology, and it may not only be the birds that are tweeting. <laughs> you know, let the world think that every day we sit in a hammock and drink red wine. Why not? It's a strong message to send. So my conclusion to this talk is that we need to be sending really strong messages. Many people have asked me, from your 200,000 collection of images that you shot in 22, 22 years, which image would you illustrate this region with? And for me, it would be this girl here. And I call it the girl with the sparkling eyes. But I want to leave you with a question. We're here in a destination that's on a world stage and we need world-class photography. Do we want to illustrate it like this? Or perhaps it may be better to illustrate it like this. Thank you very much.